Also, in other open border news, uh, I covered this this morning, secret U.S.-Canada border deal hides GMO takeover. Uh, now, this is a beyond borders, uh, border security perimeter deal that Harper and Obama have been secretly working on for more than a year. I covered it back in April. Now they're set to sign the deal, still secret at this point in time, next week, uh, at which point it will become, I guess, treaty law. Now, this bill is significant. Of course, uh, obviously, it's part of the larger North American Union deal that was leaked, that was also pursued in secrecy, started during the George W. Bush administration in 2005. They've had a number of meetings since then, uh, and Harper's been part of this all along. Now, uh, it would merge a large portion of law enforcement and terrorism efforts allowing Canadians to work on the U.S. side of the border, U.S. personnel to work on the Canadian side of the border. Uh, it would also uh, up and legitimize uh, biometric checks at the border, and it would justify surveillance, quote, track everyone coming and leaving Canada by air, land, and sea, giving that power to the United States authorities but there's more to the secret agreement, and the parts that are known about it are because it was leaked to the press. We currently don't know everything about this 32-point border perimeter plan. What's lying in plain sight here is that they also plan to, quote, streamline and harmonize regulations in the automotive and food sectors. Now, this is very significant, especially the food sector portion, because it would probably, most likely, many observers believe, open up Canada to a total assault from the biotechnology companies, Monsanto chief among them. The Council of Canadians reports that what kind of regulatory alignment might we expect to see as a result of the Beyond the Border Action Plan? The Biotechnology Industry Association asked that both countries adopt consistent science-based processes that would significantly decrease the time required for authorization of biotech crops and their products. They've asked for a harmonization of the maximum permissible pesticide residual levels. And again, many Canadians, farmers and activists among them have successfully repelled a lot of Monsanto's biotech uh, products from being introduced into the company. Uh, they fought back against bovine growth hormone, uh, GM alfalfa, and uh, have gotten an investigation into the pesticides. But the biggest pushback was against GM wheat, one of Canada's biggest exports. And that victory came at the hand of the Canadian Wheat Board which, by the way, was just dismantled earlier this week in time for the Trans-Pacific uh, Pact trade talks. So you've got Canada and the U.S. working on a bilateral open borders trade deal, part of the North American Union. Meanwhile, they're working in the Asian sector for this Trans-Pacific Partnership, all to do these so-called free trade deals, which are not free at all. They create trade blocks. If you don't become a member, uh, then you're essentially discriminated against for your exports. So it's all very interesting. They say the wheat board's probably just the beginning. Uh, they're going to go after the dairy and egg boards as well. They won't be satisfied until Viterra and Cargill and Monsanto control every bit of farmland in this country. That's a statement from Member of Parliament Romeo Saganash. Now, these boards in Canada are very socialistic, but at the same time, uh, tariffs are not necessarily socialistic. They're historically part of the American experiment as well. Uh, makes sense, but it's something all this free trade and globalization has sought to do away with or significantly limit. And one more thing about GMO introduction in Canada is the other issue of low-level presence of GM contamination, they are also separately seeking to legitimize the export of crops which are genetically modified and banned in certain countries such as places in Europe uh, where they will not accept these crops. They're now trying to pressure them to accept low-level contaminated GMO crops, a dangerous slippery slope towards total introduction of GM crops. Right now, by the way, there's about 30 commercial GM crops. By 2015, a European Commission study estimates there will be more than 120 GMO crops, something to keep an eye on. In financial news, a very significant headline story here, a bank courier van spills money on the roadway in Upper St. Clair. 
and the police have tried to round up the money after the public grabbed it, and they recovered only $400 out of tens of thousands. Uh, the police have issued a statement saying, this is not a free-for-all situation. Obviously, this money is bank property. Lieutenant Englert said police intend to give people a reasonable amount of time to come to their senses and return any money they might have taken. After that, they could charge people with theft. Uh, but you don't see that treatment on Wall Street or outside the Federal Reserve with all these secret agreements, loans, and outright theft. Also in the news, Naomi Prinz's article published today, The Fed's European Rescue, Another Backdoor U.S. Uh, bank Goldman bailout, where there was more than $7.7 trillion with a T uh, of bank subsidies given to various European banks, and that's just another part of this larger looting uh, that's going to come with the economic collapse. Also, uh, you heard about the MF Global story where they came up short on their European bets and suddenly the pension money and bank accounts from their customers went missing. Uh, well, now uh, one of the executives from MF Go Global, who resigned, by the way, in September before the company went bankrupt, has landed a new job. He's a pension manager now on Wall Street, uh, New York City Comptroller John Liu uh, has hired former chief executive of MF Global Holdings to help develop uh, and manage the city's pension investments. MF Global was sued by four public pension systems outside New York that claim the firm misrepresented its risk management practices to investors, but now one of those executives has a new cozy job uh, that would be Kevin Davis, who was quietly hired back in September. Another interesting angle. Now, uh, the Fukushima situation uh, continues to be severe. TEPCO again underplays severity of situation at Fukushima, writes Kurt Nimmo today, uh, bringing up how the Tokyo Electric Power Company is once again trying to mislead the public on the severity of the situation at the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. And uh, the government is also actively working to sweep the disaster under the rug. Its Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare recently eliminated Fukushima data from a patient survey it conducts every three years, according to the Fukushima Diary. According to the survey, leukemia cases have been increasing sevenfold over the last year, the highest rate since 1978. But there's nothing to see here. Uh, find out who took the banknotes from the road when the truck spilled them out. Hmm. Now, in other news, there's a new sex scandal. Feds charged 20 with luring illegal immigrants to work in the New York area strip clubs. They're saying it was mob run with Italian and Russian mobs who arranged sham marriages to bring Eastern European and other illegal immigrants uh, into the country and to work as strippers and exotic dancers. And it doesn't mention prostitution here, but I would imagine that's waiting in the wings uh, now, sure, that's a bad scandal. There is lots of illicit uh, mob and sex trade uh, activity going on, especially in that part of the world. It spills over to here, but that's kind of the small part of the iceberg that's above the water level. The large, massive, important part of the iceberg is well below the surface, the thing nobody likes to talk about, but you've heard about it on this program before. Stuff like the homosexual prostitution inquiry that ensnared VIPs within the Reagan and Bush administration Call boys took midnight tour of the White House. You heard about the gay porn stars serving moguls, including at places like Bohemian Grove. Uh, Chad Savage, a guy who later would visit the George W. Bush White House. All of us valets in the Grove are tittering about it, says our Bohemian blabbermouth, to think there's all these powerful conservative guys having their drinks and food served to them by a gay porn star. He makes their beds and attends to their every need, and they have no idea who he really is. Of course, even that's just the tip of the iceberg to all the terrible and satanic uh, sexual slavery stuff going on, including in political circles. There's, of course, all the stuff to do with uh, Ped State and Syracuse, the accusations going on there of uh, molestations and rape. So obviously there's much more going on than just a few strippers at a New York club, but that's the way the news goes. Now coming up, we have an important group of guests. They are the filmmakers 
who helped bring you What in the World Are They Spraying? It's Paul Wittenberger and his cohort, Chris Maple. And they are here to interview Alex Jones for their upcoming film, The Great Culling. So we'll speak with them in just a moment. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this break.